look at the word attitude. The word attitude, we're going to take each letter and it will spell out the true meaning of attitude. There are two things that will keep you out of the new city. That is a bad attitude and laziness. Attitude means in the Webster's Dictionary, a bodily posture showing a mental state. When people are bored, they slump back. Many times when you're ill in your body, your bodily posture betrays you. A lot of times a person will not come up and tell you they're angry, but by their posture, you can know their mind. A lot of times a person may have the backbone to come to you and say, I disagree, but they tell you by their posture. Let's look at the contrast between a good attitude, which is a godly attitude, and a bad attitude. The first thing about a good attitude is appreciation. Appreciation. Appreciation means sufficient critical judgment to see the value or to enjoy. Now you can pick pick something apart and become miserable. That's not appreciation. When you pick something apart with a bad attitude, you you become miserable. There is no reason to carry a bad attitude if we would stop and analyze. The more you know about the thing of getting a bad attitude, the more you can spot it and then stop it. Sufficient critical judgment to rightly divide your scales. Then you can enjoy and appreciate the value of something. For example, a good meal. A good meal that was fixed for you. You stop and analyze the time spent shopping and cooking, spreading the table. And if you don't think about it, you really can't appreciate that meal fully. To appreciate, you must judge and analyze. Then with each bite, there is an appreciation. Appreciation is to be sensitively aware of the value or worth of the thing. If we'll stop and estimate the value of being able to eat from the bride's table of the deep things of God, then we can appreciate it. But if we have a bad attitude, then nothing will be good to us. So a good attitude starts with A, the first letter in attitude, appreciation. But if you're always complaining, people will start running from you because you will lose your value. People back off from you. Now let's look at a bad attitude. A bad attitude starts with ambition, just the opposite of appreciation. Now the A concerning a bad attitude in the word attitude starts with ambition. There is a lot of ambition that is not of God. In Daniel's vision of the kingdoms, there were four kingdoms represented by a lion, a bear, a leopard, and iron. The lion was the autocratic kingdom. I am the king of the jungle, and I'll rule. And that bear is the spirit of absolutism. I am absolutely right. I am the lion and the bear, and I am absolutely right, and I won't listen to anyone else. The third kingdom was represented by the leopard and was a kingdom of ambition. Ambition is like a leopard. It is swift to work. Then the fourth kingdom was iron. It represents aggression with no mercy. But looking at ambition or that leopard spirit, it is fast to stalk its prey. Ungodly ambition will give you a bad attitude in life. 
ambition to do this or that and someone stands in front of you, then that ambition causes you to get a bad attitude. But on the other hand, if you have godly ambition and it can't be carried out as fast as you would like for it to, then you just pray. You wait on God to open the door. Godless ambition wants its way right now. And if it doesn't get it, it gets mad. Ambition means to go around to solicit votes. It means a strong desire to succeed. Ambition under the headship of God will not make you have a bad attitude if it's under the headship of God. Carnal ambition makes you go around and solicit votes for your ideas and opinions. It works behind people's backs, soliciting here and there. Then we have T for trust. Trust means firm belief, confidence, expectation, hope, loyalty, responsibility, obligation. You can't have a good attitude without trust. First of all, you must trust God, then those who God has uh, appointed to help you and teach you spiritually. We must learn how to keep a good attitude in those closing moments of time to make it to the new city. To make it, you must be looking through the eyes of God's law of love towards others. You must learn to trust God and also your spiritual leaders. This will help you to have a good attitude. Now, on the other side of the scales, a bad attitude is a, using the letter T, a trustless attitude. Something doesn't turn out the way you thought, and you say, I'll never trust that person again. A person with a trustless attitude has not one ounce of faith in God's headship. They can't trust anyone. They are always looking for the worse. Trustless means unreliable, treacherous, distrustful. So a bad attitude is a trustless attitude or a trustless spirit. We can learn the difference between a bad attitude and a good attitude. If you don't, you'll destroy yourself with your own bad attitude towards life and others. Then we have another T for Thanksgiving. And we're spelling out the word attitude. The second T on the good side of the scales is for Thanksgiving. The difference between thanksgiving and appreciation, okay? Appreciation has to do with your human feelings stirred up by evaluating to enjoy a dinner or a gift or a favor. Your human emotions are stirred. But thanksgiving is expressions of gratitude towards God. You will not keep a good attitude by just having your emotions stirred up towards one another. But then you must come on over and get trust in God. Then come with thanksgiving unto God in prayer. And if you can get this far, you'll be solidified in your attitude. Colossians 2 verse 7, it says, Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Ephesians 5 verse 20, it says, Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians 4 verse 2, Thanksgiving is thanks to God in the form of prayer. It says, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Thankless means not feeling or expressing thanks to God. That's being thankless. Thank God in prayer day by day. If you don't develop this, then you will get a bad attitude. The next one is I, A-T-T-I, for interest. 
You cannot have a good attitude without being interested in someone else or showing some concern. Interest means to share, and it also means to show concern, and it also means to be between, to walk right between someone and their problem or their need. A bad attitude is the importance of the big I syndrome. The big I. This is the opposite of interest in someone else. T, again, for thoughtful. A good attitude is thoughtful. A bad attitude is thoughtless, not concerned with others. Being thoughtful is anticipating the needs of others and to be concerned and thoughtful. Thoughtful to help others to be spared of pain by comforting them. A person with a good attitude will be thoughtful. Now we come to the U. The U is for understanding. A good attitude is understanding. As the old saying goes, to understand all is to forgive all. Understand means to stand under. You must stand under authority to, authority to understand authority. Get under what the person is trying to teach you, then you'll understand. You on the other side of the scales is for underhanded, and this is a bad attitude. Underhanded to accomplish your own will and motives, etc. Then we have D for demonstration. A good attitude will show your feelings and actions by working. Demonstrations to show by reasoning. When you have a good attitude, you can see both sides uh, of the scales. A bad attitude can only see one side of the scales. A bad attitude causes you to lose your reasoning. When you have a bad attitude, you go around damning people, condemning people without even examining the thing. Damning means to condemn by praise without enthusiasm. For example, I really appreciate the message and brother and sister so-and-so, but, there's always that but in there. Oh, it's a great church, but. Oh, they're a good person, but. That's condemning by praising without enthusiasm. It is a pseudo-spiritual covering. We damn ourselves and others with this kind of an attitude. You can put your bad spirit on others and people forget the good words of appreciation because there is no enthusiasm behind it. But they take in your bad spirit and all they remember is the bad spirit you left them with. Then we have E for envision to keep a good attitude. So we're at A-T-T-I-T-U-D-E, E E for envision. You must keep a vision before your eyes. When the devil comes to, to you to discourage you, you must have a vision. You must look above the situation and get a new vision of what God is doing. Envision bring, means to bring something in your mind that is not existing. Envisioning God changing people so you can keep a good attitude. When you have a bad attitude, you can't envision God changing you or someone else. So we need to envision a change in people that we are around. A bad attitude will think no one is going on for God. A bad attitude always has the root of envy in it. Ill will, grudge, discontent. There is a lot to be discontented about if you want to be. But if you believe God has you where he wants you, why be discontented? All these things will help us see our attitude. So this spells A-T-T-I-T-U-D-E, attitude. Attitude.